Hi everybody, I hope you're doing marvellously well. In this episode, we're going to do a fairly deep dive, fairly deep dive, into the AIX DSP Intuition Compressor. Before we get started, I wanted to let you know that we're using the new SM7DB, and it has the cloud lifter built in. We are not sponsored by them, we've just been trying it out. And we're going into our, our Neumann MT48, and we're using the DGI as well, clip-on. So I'm sure Eric will move between the two and you can have a listen and see what you prefer. But I am enjoying this so far, the SM7DB. I think it's a really smart idea to have that built in. Lots of people love SM7s, probably the reason why they've sold about 5 billion of them. Cloudlifter came along and built this little box which gave it a little bit more oomph. And now what they've done is incorporated the technology and put it in the mic. So, I don't know, you tell me what you think. So I have a rough mix here, it's very rough, of Little Empire Burn. Of course, you can download the multitracks down below, as ever. Oh, and I'm sure AIX DSP won't mind us giving away three copies of each of these plugins, so you can enter down below to win a copy of the plugin. Let's have a listen to this track here. I'm going to go to a chorus section. Clearly just a short loop. Pick that because the drums are getting a little smothered. As I say, it's a super rough mix, but I'm going to see what miracles can be performed by just compressing that snare, which is disappearing. So here are the drums in solo. There are three elements to the drums. There's a snare top, a snare bottom, and a sample that we threw in. which has got a nice ring to it. Now, all three of those elements do have a bit of EQ and a bit of compression on them, but they're getting lost in there. So what I want to be able to do, and let's see if we can do it with this, this nice intuition compressor, is see if we can exaggerate the attack enough, but also bring out a lot of body. Now, we did a little quick bit of reading about this, and what I do like is it has a look-ahead function. For many, many years, I had a CL1204. For those of you that don't know that, that is a Cowrec compressor. And I got it from my good friend, Jute, hi Jute, who worked at the BBC, and it was a compressor for broadcast. It was a look-ahead compressor. It delayed the signal ever so slightly, meaning you could control any transient you want, because the compression could actually start before the first transient came in, which is total genius. So this is all three coming in together. That's just defaulting. Bypass. Let's put the auto gain on. Bypass. I mean, it's doing what we wanted to immediately. There's more ring. There's a bit more of a snappiness to an attack. Let's throw the whole drum kit together. Bypass. Put it in the full mix. It's coming out super loud and proud, but it isn't really cutting through the mix like I wanted to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this look ahead on. So I've set it there to 67 milliseconds. Here is with that on. Is with it off. So I've shifted all of that attack and release time early. And what I like about it is it's grabbing that front end quite aggressively. And remember, this is all three elements bust together. So I'm treating the snare top, snare bottom, and the sample as one snare sound, rather than individually compressing or EQing those elements.
All right, I'm going to hear that in the track. I'm like a flame hell to the fuse. You make I'm like a flame hell to the fuse. You make I'm It's a pretty interesting technique, isn't it? It means I can sort of shape it and twist it and move it and all kinds of fun stuff. Not something I see very often in compressors. Now, I do know multiple tricks that you can do. You can take the snare drum and actually move it forward and then send that as a side chain to a compressor on the real snare itself. So you have a dummy snare track, which isn't printing left or right, but is triggering the compressor. And I do that all the time to simulate what I've just done here. So this is a nice way around it. So that's a fun thing. Look ahead compressor, really, really nice. It allows me to sort of abuse that transient quite aggressively without having to compress it as hard because, well, have a listen. If I try to emulate what that just did, by say, putting on a limiter. It's just too aggressive for me and it starts to sound like it's distorting. Let's go back to the other technique of using the look ahead. It's cleaner, and because the release time set where it's set, it almost feels like it's gating, because it's like releasing a little earlier in a really cool way. So there you go. When I saw that it had a look ahead, I was thinking, oh, we could do all kinds of fun things. Well, there you go. There's something it does. Now, let's take off the look ahead and just treat it like a regular compressor so we can see what it does. Get rid of the limiter for the moment. It's pretty nice. Gain makeup, obviously, we're using the auto gain function here, which I'm sure you appreciate because people always say, hey, louder's better. Well, the auto gain here should take care of that for us. So obviously they have a visual component. So if you look at the way this is working here, it's showing you how much compression is going on. which would be right up there here. It says show gain reduction here. There's a side chain and there's a key lesson. So if I did want to do that trick, say, by sending a very aggressive transient snare drum to this compressor so that I could really shape a transient on something that didn't have an aggressive transient. Try that for a, for a little bit of fun. I could do that by hitting side chain and then I could listen to the key lesson and then compress the sound that's coming in listen to that, and then jump back and then hear what it's doing to the sound that it's controlling, which is kind of a fun thing to do. Try that one out. Let's try this. Let's go back to our idea of the look ahead. That's pretty tasty. It's subtle what it's doing because I've started the compression so early. Let's get rid of the look ahead for a second and then slowly bring in that punch. So back to zero. This is without the look ahead. Already got a lot of transient coming through. So if you look, well, if you hear, first of all, you'll hear a lot more transient coming through. It's like a, a way of shaping the attack time. It's, it, it's probably adjusting, well, I thought it would be adjusting the knee, but then there's a knee control there as well. I don't know. Let's have some fun with this. Bypass.
I'm enjoying that punch control on the look ahead because it's sort of almost like I'm <laughs> I'm forcing it to compress early and then I'm forcing it to try and let some more transient through. That's actually the thing I'm enjoying most is combining it with the look ahead. Oh. Now I'm getting it like to be exactly over that transient. All right, this is just silly amounts of transient shaping here because I've got a punch control, which is moving that back, a look ahead, which is moving it forward, an attack time, which I'm adjusting. I haven't even gone to the hold and my release is set to 100 milliseconds. So the point is, is you can really get there. If we're listening in the mix with the full thing, we can probably have some real fun with this. So the hold function is interesting because it's it's how long I want to grab onto that transient and hold onto it. You've got a nice visual cue there. Now I'm reducing the release time. Turn the auto gain off. We need that on. Put the limiter on just for schnitz and sniggles. Don't want that on. I think with the amount of control that I've got with the attack and the hold and the release, I don't really need that. Let's completely get rid of the compressor for a second. Have a listen. Back on. Yeah, as so often happens, you get a feeling of something being louder because what's happening is you've got this really loud transient without the compressor on it. So that's, say, uh, whatever, minus 5 dB will make up that number. But it's immediately, you know, after that, this is the rest of the body of the snare. Now what's happening is that transient is squashed heavily in, it's still putting out the loudest signal as minus 5 dB, but now all the body has come up. So everybody will go, well, it sounds louder. Yeah, of course it sounds louder. The peak is exactly the same, but the body is there. That's why often we use compression, but also saturation to like soak up those transients. You put saturation or compression on a signal tame that initial transient and reduce the dynamic range between the loudest part of the snare and the quietest, suddenly the snare will get louder if it's hitting at the same level of minus five, for instance, which is what we want in the mix. Cool. Like I say, it's a super, super rough mix. So it's just an illustration of how it's improving how the snare is interacting with the rest of the music. I still want to get in there and actually mix this. But yeah, and it's, it's great seeing that visual representation um, as it goes by. Now, of course, we can go nuts on it and use the mix control, which is kind of a fun thing to do as well. So let's just say we want to really go nuts. Bring on the... The limiters go hard.
think I would try that on a vocal, something where I want to sort of parallel compress it. Not really working for me on the snare. And frankly, there's no need. We have so much transient shaping going on there. It's ridiculous. So we've been using that on feed forward. So it should be about as modern and fast as we could possibly get. I don't need to hear the feedback one, but if we wanted to, maybe for something a little bit slower, we could do that. But in this instance, we're doing a snare drum. So we want that to be as snappy and as fast responsive as possible. Let's have a look at the feedback and the feed forward compression settings on the compressor. Okay, so now I'm taking off uh, the compression that I was using, which was an Arvox and an R comp. So we've got feed forward and feed back. Now, feed back is a lot of compressors. Feed forward is a handful. Obviously, this is a very modern compressor, so it has a look ahead, meaning it can look at the transient and decide what to do with it before anything. Well, a feed forward and a feed back don't do either of those two things, doesn't delay the signal, but a feed forward will read the transient and adjust the compression based on that. A feedback already starts compressing and then reads it. So the thing about feedback compression, which is a lot of those kind of softer sounding compressors, is, is that it sounds a little bit softer. It's maybe not as precise, especially in a modern world where we have tons and tons of things going on, but it is a very pleasing compressing sound. Um, it's characteristic of a lot of tube compressors and vintage kind of stuff where everybody says, oh, it sounds really nice, it's really smooth. That's more than likely to be a feedback compressor. A feed forward is literally reading the transient, deciding how you want to compress the VCA, as it were, and it is more accurate, where a feedback is continually ana analyzing it and feeding it back in on itself. But again, it can be a pleasing sound. It can be a pleasing sound. So the question is, why are you using a compressor? Are you using it entirely to control the signal and make it always accurately fit in the mix in a lot of, which is what you would do in a lot of very dense modern mixes, or are you just trying to get that sound of compression? I suppose another way of thinking about it is like on a feedback, I'm probably going to hear the compressor work more. I'm gonna hear it sound compressed and a feed forward in theory could be more invisible. Well, let's have a listen. Let's take a little bit of the vocal and see whether that philosophy that I just waffled on about is actually true. So here is a feedback. Life is like a map. You will find your path. Bypass. But sometimes you'll get lost. Again, auto game, we should get that in. Life is like a map. You will find your path. But sometimes you'll get lost. Life is like a map, you will find your path, but sometimes you'll get lost. I gotta be honest, I really like, I really, really like listening to this uh, limiter. Life is like a map, you will find your path, but sometimes you'll get lost. That feels like a real differentiator. Uh, again, talking back to Apogee, their soft clippers were just fantastic. So, you know, a lot of people would probably want to turn it off, but I kind of like it. Life is like a map. You will find your path, but sometimes you'll get lost. Life is like a map. You will find your path, but sometimes you'll get lost. Life is like a map. Off. You will find your path. On. But sometimes you'll get lost. Life is like a map. I definitely hear it grabbing. Life is like, you know, it's grabbing some of those bigger notes and maybe choking them a little bit. Let's see what it sounds like on the same settings, not touching anything, just feed forward. Life is like a map, you will find your path, but sometimes you'll get lost. Feedback. Life is like a map, you will find your path, but sometimes you'll get lost. Life is like a map, 
You will find your path, but sometimes you'll get lost. All right, end the track. Life is like a map. You will find your path, but sometimes you'll get lost. Okay, feedback. Life is like a map. You will find your path. It's quite quiet. So let's bring up the vocal. I'm just going to actually just take the game makeup so it feels good in the mix. Life is like a map. You will find your path. But so this is the feedback setting. Life is like a map. You will find your path. But sometimes you'll get lost. Here is the feed forward. Life is like a map, you will find your path. I'm going to lead you here so you can be annoyed at me. The feed forward, at least to my ears, sounds more natural, meaning I don't hear the compression as much, but it's keeping things forward. Whether you like that or not is entirely up to you. I personally think that there's a place for both. I think something that you hear the compression on can be really, really fun. Um, think of, you know, the sound of a Fairchild being hit quite hard, you know, under the bridge. Every one of those notes sort of blooms. It's beautiful. One of the greatest kind of electric guitar sounds of all time. First time I heard it, I was like, what is that? I thought it was in the way he was playing. I didn't realize it was, a, you know, a $40,000 plus compressor making it kind of sound like that. So yes, that's a characteristic of hearing the compression. The feed forward for me makes it come forward the whole time. It's just coincidence that it'd be called forward, but I really like that. So here you are, you can choose either one of those settings. And of course there's the bus setting as well, which we can now explore. So let's look at the intuition compressor as a master bus compressor. There's a couple of extra features here I'd like to talk about. So one of those, of course, is this setting here. You've got a feed forward, a feedback compressor, and a bus compressor. So I'm going to go to bus, and I've already enabled the AGC, the automatic gain control, I would imagine, or automatic gain compensation is probably what it actually is. So I'm going to bypass it, and we'll just listen to a couple of bars of the chorus. Life is like a map. So this was a really super quick mix, and honestly, I would be pulling down the kick drum. So that attack is really, really loud. I'd be doing some extra things, but I'm going to deliberately leave it a little bit wrong to see how the bus compressor copes with it. So let's bring in the bus compressor now. I've gone to this warm auto mix bus preset. I want to start with that and see what we got. Life is like a map. You will find your Life is like a map. You will find your path. So let's play with some controls so you can hear what it's doing. I will turn the auto gain off first of all. So we'll see just, you know, how much it's doing there, how much it's adding to it. And then I like this soft limiter. I really do like that idea. Some of the best equipment I have has soft limiting. Of course, Apogee very famously had soft limiters like 25, 30 years ago, and they were superb. They were a massive difference between using, you know, in those days, the DigiDesign converters that just, when they went into distortion, was painful. And then Apogee brought out a soft limiter and it just was like, Mah. everybody went out and bought the Apogee interfaces because of it in the 90s. So let's just see, you know, to me, it feels like that's doing a nice little bit here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the two bar section with it bypassed and then with it on and off. And then I'm going to do the auto gain on and off. And yeah, let's hear what it's doing. Life is like a map. You will find your path. Life is like a map. You will find your path. Life is like a map. You will find your path. Life is like a map. Life is like a map. You will find your 
The autogain is interesting because we get so much discussion on autogain when testing plugins. People say you need to have an autogain built in. And not all autogains are created equal, are they? Because what exactly are you gaining? Are you gaining the peak? Yeah, get the same peak, but it's going to be conceivably louder. You're going to feel like the signal is louder because if this is the peak and you've got an incredibly dynamic signal and then you've compressed and the peak is the same, well, you know what? Now the dynamic signal's here and everything feels louder. So it's a really, really interesting thing because if I now adjust it so it feels the same volume, the uncompressed signal might be a little bit more pleasing in some way because you've got all of these dancing out transients. That is not what compression's about. Compression's about evening out the dynamics. So what I love about this, and all bus compression to be honest, is that done gently like we're doing at the moment because we're only on two to one. See the ratio here? We're only on two to one. The knee is off. There's no look ahead going on. The attack is fairly gentle and the release is set to auto. This reminds me, frankly, of probably something I would do on my SSL bus compressor. So why don't we go up as much as, we'll go up to four to one, which is probably what I would do on my bus compressor, between three and four to one. Life is like a map. You will find your life is like a map. You will find your life is like a map. You will find your life is like a map. You will find your life is like a map. You will find your Life is like a map. You will find your. That's pretty tasty. That's pretty tasty. I am not a big fan of really any kind of plugins on my master bus. I use them as a last possible resort. I know that's not a popular view. Everybody's talking about top down mixing and they load like 25 plugins. I'm exaggerating for effect, but tons of plugins on the master bus. To me, all of that should be done at a mix. Coming up, mixing on consoles, compression and EQing individual elements, then maybe busting them together and then going to the master bus and putting maybe a Poltec and some gentle compression on your SSL was standard of all of the great mixers and still is with a, a genius such as Bob Clearmountain. You'll still just tap his master bus, and yet his mixes still sound the best. So there's definitely some, you know, there's definitely some reality in this. So for me, that feels a little bit like an SSL bus compressor. Now, I've heard a rumor, they told me, that you can pretty much null this out if you use an SSL bus compressor. So I wonder if we can actually test that. So this sounds pretty darn good. I like this setting. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this four bar section, we double the length of the chorus, just that, bounce the disc through the plugin and then get the SSL and try and match all the settings and then bounce that to disc and then flip the polarity on one and see if it cancels out. So we're obviously gonna bounce this without any compression on it and then we'll put two compressors the original Intuition and the SSL bus and see if they really do null out. I've got the SSL bus compressor 2 open here. I don't know if this is modeled exactly on, you know, the SSL bus compressor that I had in, in my 4000 console or whether it is, you know, a reproduction using the same kinds of ideas. I mean, I don't know how they did it. The reason why I'm saying that is because I have the attack set at 20 milliseconds. I've got the ratio set to two to one, and I've got it set on auto, auto release. I've got the intuition set quite differently. I've got the attack slower at 50 milliseconds. And remember, this isn't modeled. So this would be like, if it says the attack is 50 milliseconds, it probably is exactly 50 milliseconds. At least that's what you would assume, being that you know this is a digitally designed plugin. It's not modeled on an SSL not modeled on hardware. And for those of you who know what I'm talking about, if you've ever used you know, an SSL or any great analog console, you go to 200 hertz or whatever and boost and cut it, and then you read it on screen. You could be anywhere from like 180 to 240. The reality is you're talking about a little tiny knob that you twist 
millimeters and it, you know, and it completely changes. An analog is a lot greater latitude. So the 50 to one I've got set on the intuition and the 20 to one I've got there is almost starting to null. You want to hear what it's like with just one of them so you can see what we're getting rid of? Here is the intuition on its own. Life is like a map. You will Here's the SSL on its own. But sometimes you'll get lost. Life is like a map. You will find your path. Sonically getting similar results. But if I now put them together, they practically, but don't, but practically null. There's definitely something different quite dramatically on the snare, adding that little pah. So there's a transient that's happening a little faster. And whatever I do adjusting the attack, I can't get them to exactly null each other out. So let's listen to them individually. I mean, it's close. I've heard worse, but it's not a pure null. Of course not. So let's listen to the intuition. Life is like a map. You will find your Sometimes you'll get lost. Life is like Bypass. a map. You will find your path. But There's quite a lot of difference with the volume on and off on the SSL, so I'm going to bring it up. Life is like a map. You will find your path. But sometimes you'll get lost. Life is like a map. You will find your path, but sometimes you'll get lost. Much closer. You could argue, you know, maybe it's somewhere split, split it, maybe come down ever so slightly, but it's fairly close. Here's with it off. Life is like a map. On. Life is like a map. You will find. Sometimes you'll get lost. So it says it's quite aggressive. It's giving us like six dB worth of game reduction, but it's quite musical. I mean, that's the great thing about it. I've got the release set to auto and the attack at 20 to one, or at least what it's saying on the module itself. Now I've got a much slower attack time on the intuition. Let's have a listen. Life is like a map. Bypass. You will find so now what we should do is, of course, adjust the volume. First thing I'm going to do is literally just reach for the auto gain compensation and see if it gets close. Life is like a map. You will find your path. But sometimes you'll get lost. Life My immediate reaction is with the auto gain compensation in and with the soft limiter hitting every now and then is I am feeling like there's more low end being preserved even without a side chain on. Let's see if I'm correct. You listen for yourself and see what you think. Life is like a map. You will find your path. But sometimes you'll get lost. Life is like a map. You will find your path. But sometimes you'll get lost. Life is like a map. You find your path. Definitely. So two things I'm hearing, and again, I'm no longer looking at the controls because they're when we started to try and null, we realized that the attack times were quite different. Quite, quite different. I'd like to have somebody do a plug-in doctor on these two and see, you know, what it is. I'd be really intrigued. But getting them close to nulling, not exactly nulling, close to nulling, because we couldn't get them exactly there, but using the auto gain compensation, which is increasing the output, hitting the soft limiter harder, is doing pleasing things in the low end. Definitely. Definitely the low end is fuller. But it's also just taking the high mids, which are a little bit spiky, and squashing them back in. So it's sort of doing two 
I wouldn't say opposing, but two interesting things. The low end is cleaner and louder on the Intuition, but the high end is just being smushed a little bit by it. And so it actually feels just a little bit more, I don't know what the right word is, a little dirtier, not distorted, but just like you hear those, those high mids being hit a little bit more. I mean, exciting would be the word that I think most people would use. It sounds more exciting. Here's the SSL. Life is like a map. And here's the intuition. Life is like a map. You will find your path. But sometimes you'll get So you hear those two things at once. You hear more low end in the intuition, but a little bit squishier in those high mids, which are being, you know, hit by that soft limiter. It's interesting how they both sound quite different at first, but you can get them similar-ish. The reality is, is that the intuition obviously does a schnizzle ton more features. So hopefully that was a thorough test, as deep a dive as we can imagine. I'm sure we could go into it more. You know, if you have this compressor and you've used it, let us know your feelings down below. Um, I'm I'm pretty impressed. I think that it has a lot of features that I love and what I would expect now of a modern compressor, to be quite frank. Personally, I'm not interested in using emulations anymore. I've got to have a compressor that can do some emulation kind of sounds, but also can be super modern and do everything in between. I need a sidechain function. I need all of these things. I need auto gain. I love the soft limiting. This is the right world to be in for me. I want a compressor that can do everything possible. You know, maybe it's fun to have a 1176 compressor that you can open up on every channel and do so. Don't get me wrong, that's great. But I feel like now, if you're coming up in this industry, why, why do you need to learn 55 different types? Shouldn't the compressor do all of those things? Shouldn't it encompass all of that kind of stuff? At least for somebody that's never going to go into a real room like this or never need to, and is working you know, in an environment using more digitally based recording. I feel like this is the kind of thing that all compressors should do now. But let me know what you think. Um, we're gonna play around with this some more and use it on some more stuff and maybe revisit it in a few months. I think that is actually a really good way to test these things, see how we feel after continued use. So thanks everybody for watching. So long, farewell, au revoir, au revoir. There'll be a link down below where you can check out more information on the compressor. And uh, like I said, if you've already used it, let me know what you think. <laughs>